Hell, everybody. The town of Grindavík has been split in half, and a lot of infrastructure is in poor conditions. Images from the town taken today show this really well. Just look at this massive crack in the road and the way items in stores have been thrown all over the place. These huge cracks are the cause of massive amount of ground subsidence that has been ongoing in the area after the dike intrusion. But a lot of the town has sank by one meter since November 10th. Satellite data from November 3rd to 11th came in allowing experts to work out images that show ground deformation and uplift slash subsidence. They show just how massive this event is. More on them later. To everyone's relief, residents of Grindavík got to hop back into town today to retrieve valuables and pets that were left behind. And as of the making of this video, it looks like all of the pets have been rescued, which is really good to hear. But why was everyone allowed now? Well, let's check out the details. Today, our authorities, along with experts, made the decision to allow all residents to go and retrieve their valuables. The only rules were max two people per vehicle, and everything seems to have went smoothly. It had been concluded that it would be safe with this configuration during a window lasting from 12 p.m. to around 4 p.m. A team of pet rescuers was also allowed to enter, but they walked around the town and rescued pets or made sure pets had been rescued, as they had made a list of all missing pets since the evacuation on Friday through owner submissions. They also had all the essential to access the pets, such as keys and other information, making this a really impressive operation. Now, let's check out the images worked from satellite data from November 3rd to 11th. The ground deformation images are something we haven't seen in any of the past four dike intrusions on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Just look at the new images compared to the previous intrusions. That's like a tennis ball compared to a basketball. What these images tell us is the volume of the magma dike and the rate of magma flowing into it. The results suggest that the volume of magma in the dike is around 70 million cubic meters with the peak rate of magma influx being more than 1,000 cubic meters per second. That doesn't mean an eruption will have a lava output of 1,000 cubic meters per second. No, the rate of magma influx is not this high anymore. It was this high when the magma dike was forming, as when it managed to find this crack to expand along and form a dike intrusion, it had so much pressure built up like when you shake a soda bottle and open it. Then, after a while, it calms down. The volume of this dike intrusion is similar to the volume of all the intrusions that led to the previous eruptions combined, which is insane. But why has the ground subsided so much? Well, as the magma dike gets closer to the surface, ground begins to sink instead of rising up. So, where there's a lot of subsidence, the magma is the closest to the surface, which based on the images, is just northwest of Grindavík, with the magma still being around 800 meters below the surface based on the data. Which is good news, as that means the magma's surge upwards has slowed down. Does that mean an eruption is less likely? Not necessarily. The situation remains pretty much unchanged and the odds of an eruption are still considered really high. This is backed up by the still ongoing earthquake activity that is centered in the middle of the dike, which is the area just northwest of Grindavík. So, all in all, this batch of data tells us that the odds of an eruption haven't changed all that much, and the magma sits closest to the surface northwest of Grindavík, so not directly under the town. The earthquake data tells us that magma is still moving and is trying to find a way to the surface. So. In the next few hours or days, an eruption could happen, or the intrusion stalls and doesn't reach the surface, but big intrusions like these aren't guaranteed to erupt, as shown in the Krapla fires back in the 70s, where the two largest intrusions didn't make it to the surface. Currently, earthquake data is advancing in a way that is really similar to previous intrusions, which led to one eruption. 
with power and intensity slowly decreasing, which at this point could be linked to how fast magma is moving to the surface. By looking at the earthquake chart, we can see from November 10th to 11th, the power and intensity of the earthquakes decreased really fast, which could be explained by the magma moving really fast like it did during the first 24 hours of the intrusion. Then, since late November 11th, the rate at which power and intensity has decreased is much less than compared to in the first 24 hours, implying that magma is moving much slower. It still seems to be moving. That means it may be a little bit closer to the surface than 800 meters, as the satellite data was received on November 11th. We can put out a rough estimate as if magma went from around 4 kilometers to around 800 in around 24 hours, which is 100 meters an hour. The slope of the current decrease in activity is just 15% of what it was during that 24 hour time span meaning magma could have been moving at 20 meters an hour from late November 11th to now, November 13th. It's been around 40 hours since these satellite images arrived, so if we multiply that by the velocity we retrieved earlier, the eruption should actually have started as it would have traveled exactly 800 meters. But these numbers are really high in uncertainty, and this is just pure speculation. And since the eruption hasn't started, we're either really close, or the intrusion has slowed down much more and is looking for other ways up. It could look for new ways for quite some time, like seen before the first eruption back in 2021, where after a dike intrusion event like this one, it took three weeks for the magma to reach the surface. Hopefully the intrusion will just stall or find a much more favorable place to surface. Until we get more data and details, We'll just have to wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.